my name, Shana Tova, and welcome to another beautiful, glorious year under God. Welcome to the most interesting year in this decade. I call it most interesting because it will separate the chaff from the, you know, the, 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 the purity from impure, separating the chaff from the seed. And the world will begin through the kind of sifting that will be taking place this year, begin to experience new beginnings and changes, great changes. Of course, it will come with bad pangs, the pangs of change, the pain, the, the feeling, but the overall feeling will be joy. That's the Israeli New Year 57, 83 for you. Gimel, pay Gimel, 5783. And I want to thank God that we are alive to experience this, to see it, and to enjoy it. I want to, I want to also rejoice with the Jews all over the nations of the earth for entering into God's presence today by stepping out of their homes to live in tents for seven days in the Feast of Tabernacles. We want to join every covenant child of Jehovah to say, may the Lord continue to increase his grace and presence in your life. Today, the Jews are celebrating Sukkot all over the world. It is a time when they enter into God's tents, into God's tents. And by that, they mean entering into God's presence, tabernacle, Sukkot. It's a time when they seek God for his seed, for, for his presence, for, for who he is, for his, for his essence, essence. And today, I want to, in the name of Jesus, invoke and call all Christians into that presence. Because it is real. It is today that they are entering into the covenant of his presence for the whole year. You remember Moses made this comment. Lord, if you will not go with me, I will not move further. Except you go with me. And the Lord God answered him directly and said, my presence shall go with you. Now, that is what Israel is entering into, into the presence that will carry them through the year, parting darkness, light and darkness, separating light and darkness in their lives and giving them a cover. The Sukkot is the same thing as the tent, the sub-tabernacle. It's like they are tabernacling themselves in the Lord. You know, just like Isaiah chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, will talk about the last days, that in that last day, God will build a tabernacle around his people in order to prevent the scourge of the fires of those seasons from touching them and stopping the storms from battering them and destroying them. That's what the Bible says in Isaiah 4, 5, and 6. And that's exactly what Israel is doing today. Today, I stretch out my hands to you and to your family. And can you ask God by yourself? Prayer warrior, ask the Lord by yourself. 
carry me, succor me. Succor me, tabernacle me and my house. I enter into a covenant of your presence that your presence will not leave me or leave my home or leave my family throughout this year. That wherever I go, I'll be covered in your presence. It's like what I've been preaching in several places and asking people to ask the Lord to carve a place in his rock where he will hide them and the son of wickedness will not touch them. You need to make the Lord carve a place for you for this year that we have entered where we are entering because it is one of the most unpredictable years of the decade. Unpredictable because there's a time when God is separating and making the world enter into the heart of his program. Do you really want to be in God's will and God's program? This year is going to put you there. 57, 83, which by the end of the Gregorian calendar, we will now call 2023, is a year of hiding in God's presence for the division of time, the separation of time. This is the year when God will distribute inheritance. He will, he will give people not only great wealth and great riches, but he will give them as an inheritance. Not just for a short time. Not, not, it's not just a flimsy wind. It's a wind with a difference. Are you ready for what God is about to do? Are you ready for the Messiah, the visitation, the sounds of his shofar, the sounds of his grace? If you have never learned to sound the shofar, go and start learning the sound of the shofar. The trumpet, there are different meanings. And practice to sound it and begin to sound it. Because in the day when the Messiah comes, that is one of the first sounds you will hear that will pierce through your ears, your spirit, your soul, the shofar. Go learn how to make that sound. Teach your children to make it. During your fellowships, blow it at the end of your fellowship. When you despair, call the power of God into your despair by the shofar. Separate darkness from light by the shofar. Rebuke the principalities that war against you by the shofar. Do a good warfare. Restore happiness and joy to your spirit and soul. Open an atmosphere of celebration with the shofar. Go practice the shofar because the Messiah is going to ride in it. In the day when he visits, in the sound of the shofar, I want to call all prayer men, watchmen over nations. In the name of Jesus, begin to command not just the dividing of time for your nation, but the fulfillment of prophecy. Because this year is going to shake up nations, to shape them to look like prophecy, to, to just fulfill the things of God, not the things of man. I pray God will grant you understanding. It may sound like the rumbling of a prophet, but I am sounding the shofar already in words to let you know the king is coming. The king is coming. So it's time to seek the presence of the Lord to stay with you and walk with you and be the covering of your family, that you will be manifested throughout this new year in his presence. And it is with this that I want to invite us to the great gathering of watchmen in Kaf and Chan and people who wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This October, in just a short while from now, from the 24th of October 
to the 29th. We'll finish 29th early hours of the, uh, 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 of the morning of the 29th. That means the first hours of the morning of the 29th. That means we'll be ending on the 28th, midnight into the early mornings of the 29th when we sound the shofar at midnight. And we rejoice and we release us under the covering of his shofar. Don't miss it. It's a most glorious moment. I'm going to take one of the moments to take all the on internationals to our high tower. It will be put on the screen for you to see. Our 16-story prayer tower, world international prayer tower that we have named Daddy Enoch Adejare Adeboye World Prayer Tower. I will take you there, up there, and from the top we will sound the shofar over the nations of the earth. Make sure your nation is represented. Come, let's join hands in that tower and raise a shout because the year of the Lord has come. This year is the year of the Messiah. What will you want the Messiah to do for you? To redeem for you, to get for you, to get back for you, to, to clothe you with. Can you make a list of them and simply take a sacrifice to him and put that list before him and say, Father, I ask you concerning these things and I bring a sacrifice and I say, Lord, by the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus, open the gate, spiritual and physical, to make provision for these things that I ask you. And as you do that, you will be shocked at what you will find. The Holy Spirit will open a new heavens. Why don't you do that and take an anointing oil with you when you pray that prayer and anoint the sacrifice and anoint the prayer items. Anoint the sacrifice. Anoint the prayer items. And take that sacrifice to a place where there is a need and put it there. And let the Lord germinate and heal somebody's desire, need. If you are sending it to throne room, send it to our areas of need, like salary, like the 16-story tower. Or the new sanctuary we are building, the 16,000 sanctuary we are completing now. It's not completely completed, but you can help us complete it. Or send it to other ministries where there are needs, but the places of needs, make sure your sacrifice satisfies a need so that God can satisfy your need. Our bank details will be put on the screen and you can send help and send us a text via the numbers you will see on screen. And with that text, let us know the needs you have sown for. And our prayer warriors will take up that need and they will stand with you. It is the day of the showcasing of the power of the Lord. It's the day when God is reaching out his hand to fish people out, bring out people and put them in their rightful places. It's a year of great glory for the church. It's a year of birthing. And in birthing, there has to be judgment. So it's a year of forcefully taking out of the hand of Satan all the slaves he, had, he has enslaved. So which area do you want God to touch for you? What waters do you want him to smite? Just take a sacrifice and say, my God, arise, smite these waters. And one of the key scriptures that comes with the year that we shared during Rosh Hashanah in our meetings in, is Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 9. That is the key scripture. Pay Gimel is making bear, to make bear, to make the hand of God bear in the Hebrew language. It just means to make bear. God is going to open up everything, bring them to the surface, open up world, open up darkness. They will not be hidden. It will cause a lot of pain, smite darkness, bring judgment to it. But you will make bear everything, the truth and the lie. In government, in politics, in our lives, in nations, in the church. It's making bear. 
the goodness of the Lord, making bare the love of the Lord, making bare his embrace, his joy. It's a festive year, more than a morning year. It will cause pain for those who deserve pain because the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord is going to show itself mightily. For those who wait on him, it will be a season of rejoicing, of growth, of great prosperity, stupendous prosperity, stupendous prosperity. Yes, what does that Habakkuk scripture say? Verse 9, thy bow was made quite naked. God is going to openly fight. God is going to openly bring judgment. God is going to openly showcase his strength, his hand, his power on the behalf of those who sigh and cry and wait always for him. That's the season we have entered into. The Bible says according to the oaths he has made with us, the covenants he has made with Israel. So if you don't have an oath with him, when you take that sacrifice, enter into a covenant of redemption. Enter into a covenant of prosperity, a covenant of joy, a covenant of divine visitations, a covenant of eternal life, the covenant of eternal life. Enter into several covenants and into oaths with him and invoke his presence to carry you through the year. That is what you do before your seed. Let your seed become like an altar. You put it like this is before me right now. You put it just like this is before me. Lay it before the Lord. Stand before it. Kneel before it. And say, Lord, come on this altar and enter into covenant with me. Like the prophet did in the book of Numbers 22 and Numbers 23 and Numbers 24. Lay the covenants of seven altars. But this time, take a covenant of three or four and lay it before the Lord. Number three is going to play a very unique role this year. Somehow, in your sacrifices, number three will play a, a, a very, 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 very key role. It's going to, I see an unlocking power in number three this year. An unlocking power. A power of redemption. A power of grace. Take advantage of the good things God is releasing. And let a new glory begin in your life. The Bible says he will make bear his hand according to the oaths that he has made with the tribe of tribes of Israel. With my tribe. With your tribe. With my family. My own. I as a nation. Kure as a nation. You as a nation, what covenants has the Lord with your house? Your house was, must make specific covenants with God this year. It's by covenants that the gates will open, inheritance will be released. Specific covenants and oaths according to Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 9. So, make specific covenants. So that you can enjoy, enter into the glory of the Father. Make specific covenants. In those covenants, ask God to go to war on your behalf. In those covenants, ask Him to open gates. In those covenants, tell Him to water your land, water your life, water your spirit. Bring you back joy, restore back that joy that had eluded you. In those covenants, ask for healing. And this year will be the dividing top of time and seasons for you. Bringing new seasons, bringing a refreshing to your life. Is that not what your spirit desires? So God is entering into covenants with the tribes and laying bare his hand because of that covenant. And then... Second scripture is a New Testament scripture. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. 
Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13, to be specific. The two scriptures there are 13 and 17. Hebrews 6, 13 and 17. But I want to read all then. Please read all. I'm just putting that to let you know where the emphasis is in this case. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could not swear by no greater, he swore by himself. It was by oaths God sealed covenants with Abraham. Just like I told you, enter into oaths with God. He sealed covenants by an oath. Invoke the spirit of the sukkah upon you. Let God sukkah you. Let God sukkah you. Sukkah you. Sukkah you. Tabernacle you. Sukkah is dead. Tabernacle in you. Tabernacle. Tabernacle. Ask God to sukkah you. Tabernacle you. Hide you in his presence. So you are not far away from sight. He is always sighting you. But this is done by promises, by oaths. Look at God covered Abraham with promises, covered Isaac with promises, succored them with promises, secured them with promises. And oaths, it's a relationship between him and them. Do you have that tangible relationship? Build an altar by that sacrifice. Put the altar in front. Uh, put, put the sacrifice in front. Put your prayer items there. Go on your knees and say, God, I fall before you. And I invoke a covenant between you and my house today. And by that, this covenant, you will carry me. By this covenant, you will speak to the earth throughout this year. Your voice will not cease speaking on my behalf until your fullness has affected itself in my life. Until your fullness is effective in my life. Until your glory becomes my manifestation and my glory. Yes. That is what the year is all about. Covenant and God making his arm bare. Making his arm bare, making his arm bare, smiting the waters, opening up the sun to shine, the glory to come down through warfare, warfare, warfare. Saying, surely, blessing, I will bless thee. That is verse 14. And for multiplying, I will multiply thee. <laughs> and so after he had patiently endured. Abraham had patiently endured. He obtained the promise. Now, note 16 and 17, particularly 17. For men, verily, men, we on earth, swear by the greater an oath, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, which is true. But here verse 17, we are in God willing more abundantly to show unto the hearers of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. Read other versions and see what they say. But God, to make us secure, feel secure in his presence, sealed it with an oath. That is the meaning of that scripture. That is, there is an oath on every promise that God has made for your life. There is an oath to enforce it. Invoke that oath on the altar of your sacrifice. Invoke it to speak for you in the city center, to speak for you in the marketplace, to speak for you in government, to speak for you in the politics or in the polity, to speak for you in your social interactions, interpersonal relationships, in your marriage. Invoke the covenant to speak for you in your sleep, to speak for you when you are awake, to speak for you when you want a rest, to speak for you when you're on holiday, to speak for you in every situation that you find yourself, or in all situations. And then you will enjoy this year, 57, 83. 
make giving part of your life in this new year. And God will make receiving part of your life throughout the year. I repeat, make giving part of your life throughout this year. And God will make receiving part of your life throughout this year. I will let you go to start your consecrations and set your life straight for the year to straighten out things and begin new things for you and your family to draw your list establish your altar and speak to the heart of your nation because the day of the lord is at hand and when you do that please take that hebrews chapter 6 read it to the lord verses 13 to 17 and say lord is on the basis of this I enter into covenant for you to redeem this, to do this, straighten out this, sort out this matter for me and bring fulfillment to my life. And stand back and see the salvation of the Lord and see whether the Lord will not do abundantly more than you have asked of him in this year. Can you also take a separate sacrifice for your nation and vow it to your nation? And please send it to that address, to our altar, where we pray for nations. The sacrifice for your nation. And let the Lord raise a secret in your nation that will become your testimony in heaven and on earth this year. A secret that will be written in your name. That because of you, salvation came to your country. That because of your divine visitation, God did a new thing. Together, let us build the kingdom. Together, let us welcome the Messiah. Together, let us prepare the way for his coming. For that is my passion. That is what I live for. And Lord, in the name of the Messiah, I ask that those who are in this broadcast today, if any is suffering from any infirmity and disease, in the name of Jesus Christ, rebuke it now. I rebuke that infirmity. I command it out of that body, that flesh, that home. I rebuke that restraint, that buffeting spirit. I command that lump to disappear. Yes, I see God fizzling out a lump. I saw him squeezing it out Rabo receive your miracle i see somebody excreting out a poison or something that has been creating problems in the body and within the next seven days it will not be part of your body anymore i break the spirit of that altar that has tormented you in the name of jesus receive your miracle somebody has been having strange kinds of headaches for the, almost the past seven months, somebody else for the last three weeks, I break the curse of that headache and I release you. I hear the master say, be free. I repeat, I hear the master say, be free. I therefore decree, be free. Be free. Be free. Cut loose. Go free in Jesus' name. I see the Lord washing your feet where you are. And I see the Lord preparing a new place for your feet. I see some warmth going through your feet. You know, some kind of anointing, presence, glory. It's like you have been worn new sandals, clothes for great things, for conquest, for for inheritance. Paku. Mighty things. To do major things. Today, receive that miracle in Jesus' name. I see God removing somebody's heart. And I see him putting a new heart. I don't know what that means. According to your need, receive. 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 
Receive in the name of Jesus. Heart shaking to live. For those of you who are taking covenants for your nation, for your nations, it will bring a change, not just in leadership, but you will find yourself easily receiving miracles in those nations. Your altars, your own altar, or your altars will prosper in your nation in this season. Can you stretch out your hand unto me here? Let's together just receive this divine visitation of the Most High. And tell the Lord, I receive your divine visitation for this season and this year. I receive the separation of the year. I receive. And I graft in the Gogolian 2023 20, into the Hebrew 5783. And I ask that they become one for my life in Jesus' name. That they work out the same righteousness of the Messiah for my life in the name of Jesus. That the witchcraft in the Gregorian 2023 20, be cut off from now, this October, in the name of Jesus Christ. Even for my life in Jesus' name. Can you say amen to that? Can you say, I separate all the four winds of the earth that war against me. And I release the Holy Spirit to bring peace in the midst of warfare. And to establish the reign of my life and the reign of my Christ in every situation. But I thank you for this divine crown that I'm seeing rest upon the people as they pray. I see a divine crown and I see a scepter that will seek glory for you. I see a scepter that will bring glory for, to you. I see a scepter that will set you upon a new seat. Hey, these three months will be seeking seats for you. And by the first two quarters of next year, you will find yourself in new thrones, on new seats, in new dis designations. That is what I hear the Spirit of God say. Receive this visitation of the Most High in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Father. And man, if you are not born again, fall on your face and say, Father, don't leave me out of this blessing. I confess my sins and I invoke you to make me a new man. I plead with you to save my soul. I invite Jesus into my heart to become the high priest of my dwelling and the grace of my life. Removing these garments of sin and giving me grace, the grace of the new life that is in Christ Jesus to succeed and to overcome sin. I receive God's divine new creation in my body and I thank you for saving my soul. Let the sacrifice of Jesus be sufficient for me today, now and forevermore, and carry me for the rest of my life. Thank you, Father. I believe that you have saved me because I have confessed my sins and asked you for forgiveness in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? Do a proper prayer and let God start a new relationship and open this Abrahamic covenant to you, I mean blessing to you, the Abrahamic blessing to you that is in Christ Jesus, that Jesus is making full in this one year known as 5783 Hebraic calendar and very soon to be known as 2023 Gregorian calendar. I hope you have grafted the two calendars that from today there is a breaking of the barrier of one or the other. And there is a release of fullness throughout. That one will not have power over you. 2023 Gregorian calendar will not have power over you. That the Hebraic visitation of God through Christ Jesus will rule over your year. Thank you, Father, because you hear us always. Thank you for fulfilling prophecy through us. Thank you for gathering your ban in our houses and your plenty and your fullness in our lives. 
Oh, we welcome the dew of heaven today. We welcome you into our lives. In Jesus' name. Can the people say amen? Amen. Amen.